Greetings from just off Orwell Lane. Tonight, we have the Nosferu with a thousand faces with Shanth and Jetty and Steve Dye. Um, we're going to be talking about Campbellian monomyths, the hero's journey, pulp influences, and just in general, some of the art influences that seem to jump off the page with what Shanth has been able to put out here. I'd like to start off with kind of a lead in, and that's it is said that we are all searching for a meaning to life, but that really isn't true. What we are trying to locate is an experience of being alive, that our life experiences on this purely physical plane will have a resonance within our very being and reality so that we actually feel the rapture of being alive. And I feel to a large degree, that's what the book and the art that Shant has here, the uh, Nosferu, the Crypt Walker, that brings across. Uh, what, Shant, if uh, you may, if you would, how does how did Campbell and his uh, hero's journey and monomyth play into the creation of this character in this book? Wow. Well, that's a that's a really good question. I mean, for me, it it was sort of the beginning of my whole journey into mythology was being exposed to Joseph Campbell when I was in you know college, when I was in my late teens. And so it's it's always been on my mind. But I think that the biggest aspect of that is and something that I think we've all talked about is the importance of needing heroes in your life is a guiding light. And interestingly enough, uh, Joseph Campbell is one of those guiding lights for me. And so, you know, when I sit down to write a story, I think what, you know, the the whole Campbellian, you know, heroes journey thing did for me is it, it helped me to realize that it wasn't um, it wasn't a sign of higher intellect or having a higher intelligence to be cynical and to not be aspirational and all of those things. I realized that that was, you know, a fool's errand. And that's how mythology has informed this story. It's about a character who is um, who has kind of been, um, you know, born into that sort of soup of subjectivism and, and in some ways nihilism and finds himself, you know, kind of fighting this this you know, battle for good and coming out of realizing that he is capable of being a hero and not just not being a villain. And so that's a powerful journey to me anyway, you know. I think it's ultimately a powerful journey to most of us that I guess don't fall into, you know, it's an apt metaphor for the times we increasingly live in, isn't it? Yeah. You know, to, to not, I mean, the key word, I think that you, you know, aspirational. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with aspirational? You know, and I, and I don't think that, it, you know, that the monomyth um, uh, continues to be so important due to repetition or due to the, you know, we're used to hearing that story. No, it's, it's that I think most people, unless they lead an extraordinarily charmed life, I don't know <laughs> yeah. about that, but most people, you know, I mean, there, you know, there's, there's three essential, I mean, most people experience departure at some point, separation, you know, and then you, you want, what do you do with that? You, you get aspirational and you turn that into a return to the core values that you want to hold dear. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. So well, grabbing, I mean, grabbing a hold of what you just said, Steve, we've sure. got um, what, what Campbell essentially did, right, is he took Jung's yeah. collective archetypes and mm -hmm. merged them with Van Gen's three stages of the rite of passage. And the three yeah. stages of the rite of passage that Van Gen talked about were separation, initiation, and return. So by bringing up separation, is that where you were kind of leading into that? And then if so, Steve, and maybe Sean could finish this if that's a yes, how do you view the separation, initiation, and return process as, do you view it as a linear concept? Like, was it kind of, did they flow together as a story, or is that kind of evolving with the art as it goes through the book? Well, to me, it's more about the challenge, but I think I'll actually let Sean fill that question, because we're here to talk about his book, not my story. <laughs> well, you know, here's here's the thing for me, you know, is, is that we're all, we, we all have these values and these things, like the three of us obviously... Um, were affected by the works of Joseph Campbell. And I think that, that you know, that's the, the, you know, the nexus of where we share these things. But at the end of the day, the, the real aspect of this work and the real aspect of what we do is finding a way to apply it in our lives. And, you know, there's so many different 
stories and journeys in the monomyth, the one that I wanted to sort of deal with is this period that we're in where ideas like nobility and all of that are um, something that's looked down on, thought of as stupid or worse still, you know, um, uh, you know, ignorant or racist or tied to some other aspect of things. And I think that it's left a lot of us feeling kind of hollow even though we, you go about trying to do the right things a lot of times in life, if you feel like it's hopeless and if you're living in that hopelessness, you start to run out of energy and steam in doing it. And so for me, this story was about somebody, who, you know, the um, somebody finding their why in a sense and somebody kind of coming out of cynicism and nihilism. So the first thing they do is they do leave. There is that moment where they say, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Like, I can't think this way but they still haven't filled up that space that they've hollowed out with all that other stuff with anything to believe in and move towards. And for me hearing, you know, Joseph Campbell talk about, you know, you don't have to use this deconstructive or this academic intellectual breakdown of these themes in order to rid yourself of all of this stuff. It can actually deepen your relationship with it. And that's what this character is about. I mean, it's a, it's Lovecraftian in, in a lot of its, its influences, but the thing that, that interested me is, is that we've got this whole pantheon of Lovecraftian cosmic horrors, eldritch horrors, whatever you want to call it. And to me, it seemed like it was possible looking at sort of Hindu mythology and the various cultures that I grew up around and even Roman Catholicism um, to be able to look at these things and say, what would a cosmic angel look like? What would happen if we, we created something that could... Um, balance out that other side of the myth because right now i think we're we've got cynicism and anti-cynicism and i think campbell opened the door for something bigger so my character leaves out of necessity can't stomach the cynicism he's not wired that way like a lot of us are okay so kind of taking that and if i could i want to spin it back to you a little bit and sure. you know a lot of a lot of the modern takes on campbell is that the the hero needs to suffer an interchange as a result sure. of the journey? Yeah, you know, um, I don't think I don't think of the separation as. I mean, in some cases it might be voluntary, but usually it's more like involuntary. You know, mm. you you are, you know, you are forcibly, you know, your 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 home, your family, your what whatever the situation is. It's it's not like you choose. I mean, in some cases. I'm sorry. I digress. Aldous, you had a point. That's what no, my epitaph is going to say, by the way. I was telling my wife this. My epitaph is going to say, but I digress. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I can have a really like concise question in mind and then actually just like filibuster in a circle for two minutes trying to set it up. Anyway, back to you, Aldous. It's your show. No, no and that's fine. I mean, this, there's a thousand different ways, just like there's a thousand different faces that this can go. And I think that's kind of, that's the, the root of, I think, well, what you know, we're it's all kind of talking around. You know, if you want to, if you want to, I don't know, some would argue, but the whole thing boils down to redemption arc. And I think that's what everybody wants in a movie, in a comic book, in a, in a novel, in themselves. Is that redemption arc because there's always uh, hurdles and you know yeah. I mean we all want to be I don't know well that's not really I mean that's yeah, yeah, assist, uh, you know assist you, well, everybody, task, you know you, you want to be the hero I mean that that everybody like, in fact well, at least yourself. Well, I think, no, no, I think it's a little bit different than that. Sean's had a great point, and I don't know if it was in his, uh, I listened to I his, one, no, one of his no, videos today, and he was talking about how men, and men specifically, when they find a woman that sees something inside of them mm. that they think is there, but they're not sure, but when they see somebody, they, they express that, that yes, it is there, it builds confidence and it builds you up. No, it's and that's kind of, difference. Yeah. that's kind of where I was headed with, if you, and yeah. this, I, Anybody that's jumping into Campbell now, the interpretations are it's a dark, cynical, um, it's weird. It's a dark, cynical, collectivist view of what the hero should be. And this take that the hero needs to suffer an interchange instead of the hero doesn't necessarily need to suffer an interchange. He can celebrate an interchange. And I think that's what you were getting to with the cynical and the anti-cynical uh, diametrically opposed sides of it. Sure. I mean, think about it this way. And I think Steve had a really good point there with it, which was. Um, you know, when we're talking about whether it's by choice or not, well, let's take a character like Superman, who we see as this incredible, you know, symbol of good. The story starts 
with his entire planet being destroyed and his parents and every member of his, you know, um, uh, planet being killed. Like, that's a hell of a way to start a hero's story and certainly not by his choice. And I think that that's that's a really profound point. And I think the other aspect of it is, is that um, and this is something that I think that, um, you know, I'm Peterson, Jordan Peterson clearly knows about Joseph Campbell. I hear him, you know, mention him you know, every now and again. And uh, and so I'm, I'm sure he's aware, you know, of a lot of that stuff and the Jungian, you know, perspective on things. But what I always say to people is, is that we really we need to know that that heroism is possible because we do know when we're doing something that is not in accord with our highest you know, hopes and ambitions for ourselves. And unfortunately, I think that um, the thing that, how do I word this? The thing that, you know, when people talk about how Joseph Campbell is seen as collectivist or Joseph Campbell is viewed um, in one particular way or one particular light, I think a lot of that comes out of the fact that we have this, um, we have this kind of, um, what's the word I'm thinking of perpetuated propaganda machine of cynicism, nihilism, and, and um, anti-heroism. And so it's, it's odd because in a lot of ways, Campbell was, um, you know, a heretic in the sense of how he was opening up these ideas of religion. Those were very um, progressive ideas, dare I say, to, you know, conservative thinkers in religion at the time. And now that he's seen as a part of the establishment speaks to the kind of, um, the kind of forces that are afraid of what these stories mean. All they basically mean is, is that there's more we could be doing. And then what, as storytellers, there's a lot of different ways to come out of, you know, your experience and become a hero. I don't know why that's so terrifying to people other than um, to go to back to Campbell, the a refusal of the call. And they want everyone to that, not hear it. Yeah. Ahead, I sorry. mean, if, if you can't enjoy a redemption arc, what does that say about you? I don't, you know, I don't know. If, if you don't, if you don't believe that redemption is a thing, yeah. Uh, well, I think that ties that ties into the whole discussion of the the modern the modern deconstructionism of the hero, and you can't have the hero being heroic because so many people deep down inside don't understand, as Sean said, what answering the call means. Hey, man, they don't even understand good and bad. You know, right? Well, and then, I, you yes. know. I, I'm a little out of touch and a little out of, you know, um, uh, I don't necessarily ascribe to 1783 French existentialism anymore, mm -hmm. but that deal where, you know, if all the gods are dead, then be a god yourself. People can take that as, oh, yeah. no, it just means that you, you need to have a sense of good or bad. You need to have a sense of right and wrong. You need to have a sense of good and evil, and, you know, apply that going forward. And, well, uh, I think I think that's what I think that's one of the the beautiful things that Sean's done here with his book uh, Nosferu, the Crypt Walker. He's uh, it seems to be a stark delineation between good and bad, and I'm just basing that off of how you've drawn it. And I think that's one of the most powerful things that you can do. Um, that's really it's not done too much anymore. And honestly, it's one of the things that really jumped out about your work is everything is very Thank stark. I, I appreciate that. You know, it's because in you know in my heart, you know, uh, when I'm I'm doing my work. Um, I am, I am, let's, the, what's the word? I am an experienced, which is to say, um, what is it? Experience is what you get, what you didn't get, what you were trying for. Uh, I'm, I'm an experienced, um, optimist, which is to say that I've had enough experiences with things not going well to where my, yeah, you're my used to it right. after a while. Exactly. Oh, I tell yeah. people this, someone said to me, uh, what's, uh, you know, what's your, your philosophy for raising your kids? And I remember telling them, well, you know, you can't fall out of the basement. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you know what I mean. And, <laughs> and you know, for for me, right when I when it comes to this, is if if you're a reader and you are looking for like think about what how what our bar is right now for comics, I would say like, and heroism, you can't fall out of the basement. No, Sparrow yeah. is a character who has been through the ringer and in a lot of ways going to pulp like the shadow. By all rights, he has all of the capacities that would make him an excellent villain, except for the ability to be a villain. And the thing that that is really interesting is, and and this is a uh, this is another view that I throw out there, is I actually think a lot of these people know darn well what good and evil are, 
I think that that's they consciously are rejecting what they know to be right. Like when you see somebody, if you don't understand good, evil or quality, even good and bad, you don't feel resentment when you see somebody who outshines you because you wouldn't feel jealous because you can't see quality. So when I see people, you know, in, you know, who cannot celebrate other people's accomplishments, I know they know what quality is or they wouldn't hate it when they saw it. Does, does that make sense? No, it, it oh, does. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. And I mean, you could do an interesting debate as to our, is there an inverted journey in that process itself compared to what Campbell talked about, but kind of mm. going back to what you said. So do you think your, this book, Nosfero, is this somehow, is it a direct response? Is it an unconscious response to that environment that you see? Do you feel yourself as this, there's a, there's a need out there for this or is it, is it vital? It, you, what's the message that you're, you know, is there that oh, wow. message? That what is that quote that everybody always says? You know the one. Oh gosh! If you, uh, the famous Hollywood producer said, "If you want to send a message, call Western Union." <laughs> <laughs> Here's 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 the message I, that I, I can tell you this, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Is that all? I you know I spent 18 years in academia, and there was a lot of intellectualizing in there. And at a certain point, it got to the point to where it was a lot of nihilistic dogmatic thinking that you see is so pervasive out into the world and at the end of the day when i'm i believe in beauty and i believe in bringing beauty to the viewer i am not you know built like a superhero but i you know i'm not uh you know graham nolan uh but, but i i i, I, I understand that what it's like and the dedication that's involved i love boxing and i understand the dedication that's involved in that i understand beauty so for me, the things that I want to, that I think are worth celebrating are what I paint. I think monsters are great, as the great mythic storytellers did. I think that uh, tragedy can be operatic and beautiful. And I think um, uh, overcoming the odds and heroism and success and goodness can be. And so I want to paint women that are in many ways just this manifestation of femininity because I think that femininity is a very strong quality. And the same thing goes with masculinity. I think that good when it's presented um, in a real, you know, life vivifying, as Campbell would say, way, then it, it just it's like I want people to get this book, open this book up and forget how much garbage is happening around for as long as it takes them to go through it. And if I paint it well enough, which I intend to do uh, and draw it well enough and put a compelling story in front of them, I want them to be able to return to it. Like we do with pulp novels. And to be honest, like I do with Joseph Campbell and the power of myth. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I go back to those videos when I feel like I've lost my compass. So yeah, it comes out of, this is me sort of saying to the audience, you're not wrong to be hopeful. I'm going to put everything I have like, to when you guys get this book the best way i could put it is you know full well when you guys see the stuff i'm doing that it takes time so you know when i put a hopeful message in front of you that i'm telling you that it not only do i think that good is something i want to show it's something i want to work for and i want you to be involved in it i want us to all be involved in bringing forth good heroic stories and isn't that what everybody's doing in cg right now I think Campbell's important. It changed my life. What if somebody hears about Joseph Campbell, Carl Jung, who's never thought of these things? I mean, we got a pretty smart crowd, frankly. So I would think it might be unlikely. But yeah, some of them. At some <laughs> yeah. point. Yeah, I know. Not, not including myself. I'm not <laughs> some of them are. But you know yeah. what I mean. You ever yeah. have somebody come in a comic shop and change your life by going, have you read this? I have. Yeah. You know? Oh, have absolutely. You yeah. Have you absolutely. seen Joseph Campbell? Well, I've said. never heard of that. Right. That's our that's everything we do here. You know, so, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question, but, you know, <laughs> no, no, I think in, in a roundabout yeah, way, I, think well. you did. I mean, yeah. you, you, you did an excellent job. And I think I think kind of what you're looking for is in a non-religious sense, it's it's a spiritual aid yeah. to get you over that crest, over that bump. to Because I think contemporary societies does. There's definitely a wall. And if you're not actively trying to get over the wall, sometimes you need a boost. And yes, I think you know, inspirational art and an inspir especially an inspirational story can definitely give you that boost to get over that wall and maybe see that, you know, the sun, the sun's shining and it's not nearly as dreary and you can accept the call. It's really, not. It's really not. We're not all dying. You know, yeah. we're not all, I mean, it's, there's, 
There's the ever-growing wave of negativity from all sides. You know, the the movies aren't good. The comic books aren't good, sure. But wherever we turn, it's the, you know, it's... it's well, it creates an endless the feedback. The falling, you know, and then yeah. it's... And I really feel like a book like this addresses the... Um, I don't know. I still have the general notion that I would just like a little escapism, please. That is would it. You, would you, would you fuck that. off with all the rest of this and just give me a nice story that's fun to read? Because I don't want to th think about the shit that's on my phone or on my you, computer or any of that, you know? You've absolutely got it. And I'm going to tell you, this is a funny story. So for a long time, I, you know, and I, I started making art in a completely different way. I crowdfunded two books, art books on Indiegogo. Um, and those are, I just, uh, thank, thankfully, Phil, if you're watching this, uh, <laughs> Phil Diaz uh, suggested that I make them an add-on perk too. So I appreciate that. He's, he's helped me with that. But I decided I wanted to make work and artwork that um, was sort of ennobling to the human experience because I was missing it. And I hadn't written a comic story in a while. And every time I, I wrote a comic story, I said to myself, like, why is this so difficult? And I finally realized that what I was doing was, is I was intellectualizing it too much. I was critiquing it too much. So I was doing the audio commentary on the film as I was trying to make it. And that's what happens when you go to a college and you get your head filled with critique culture. Yeah, it's a lot of deconstruction happens. and not a lot of living your life. And I thought when I was a dad and, or when I am a dad still, but you know, my kids are 16 now, but it's, it's as a dad, I, when I'm there, it's, there's sometimes you're in the zone and you're just playing with your kids. Like when they're two or three, you have to just be in the zone. And so the paintings that started coming out of this, and one of the paintings that it's not my best painting in the world, but this is a really good example of where the, the realness, where the, you know, you stick your hand, you know, on, in the earth and feel it, the ground of what Campbell does when it manifests in my work, it's not intellectual. Um, it's, it's, it's aesthetic. And it's more physical, like anything you do. Muscle memory, right? I mean, you know mm -hmm. this when you're riding bikes, yeah. right, Steve? It's it's muscle right. memory. So yeah. If you're thinking about yeah. it at a certain point, you're in trouble. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, you can't, absolutely. You yeah. can't do. Uh, yeah, you know. yeah. Let's not digress. Yeah, I could go in but that you know direction I mean. hard, but let's not do that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, but yeah, it's, that is the thing. You know, yeah. So you know, here's, you the... here's a painting for you guys, and this is inspired by my love of King Kong. And it's inspired by my love of my wife, and it's inspired by my love of my kids. And oh, she needs to go full screen it. on that. We'll see. Yeah, you guys will know how to do that better than I will. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this this painting right here was about me watching my wife as you know the mother of oh, yeah. some teenagers, oh, yeah. and thinking about femininity, the sexiness the motherhood, but then also as a dad wanting to be able to hold them in my hand and how big teenagers get to be and how much that becomes involved in it. There's nothing cynical about this to me. This is beauty times 11. Do you know what I mean? Like this is, this is an attempt at creating the sublime out of pulp, pop, mythic culture, all the stuff we love. And it's a visual of beauty. And it's a visual of, of those things that, that speak to us. And again and again, when I'm doing my stuff, that's that's the big thing for me. You know, it's like, what is it? What's it ultimately about that ennobles us? And, you know, when I'm doing a piece like uh, let's see here, but when I'm doing other artworks, which I can, you know, we can talk about that another time. But when you ask, like, how does it manifest itself? When I read about love, if I'm reading, let's say, C.S. Lewis talk about love or Joseph Campbell talking about love. Um, I have this joke in my head where I hear Werner Herzog. Like I decided I need to start hearing voices that were at least more fun in my head, right? And, and so <laughs> the one I decided will be my, my commentary is Werner Herzog, right? And so <laughs> I saw, I mean, if I'm going to hear voices, I should be the casting director. Right? Um, I'm stealing and, uh, that line, brother. You know? and Next time uh, I have this conversation in a non-comic skate crowd, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, you know yeah. what I mean? No, use it anyway. At least I can do is right introduce now. more entertaining voices into my head. Exactly, right? And so like, there was this interview with Werner Herzog, and somebody goes, weren't there times, though, in your, your filmmaking – where there are stories where, you know, you, you know, people, you almost died. Like it was really dangerous. And Werner Herzog looked at him and he went, the, the kid in the audience asked him, he goes, so what? <laughs> and it just killed me. <laughs> it was like, the guy was saying, you've been in life threatening situations. And Werner Herzog was like, 
so what? <laughs> that has nothing to do with the filmmaking. <laughs> and so whenever I um whenever I would read Joseph Campbell, I, I have this new thing in my head with whenever I start intellectualizing a story, I hear Werner Herzog in my head going, so what? So I can say, and this is a symbol for this, and this is a symbol for that, and this is a symbol for this and that, and the other thing. And then I hear that voice, so what? Someone's reading this. A human being yeah. is looking at this. Is she beautiful? Does she make you think about that time you saw that girl? Is What is it like for her to be watching him, catching him in this moment? And we pause to see how beautiful she is and how interested she is in what she's seeing. What does that mean to the reader? Well, it's an experience, as you were saying, right? It's not about a meaning and me telling them what to think. It's going to be their experience. Maybe they're thinking, what's my relationship with this girl? What's my, like, how do I feel about it? Then you're going to see his relationship. And you kind of get to have your own experience. And that's what I love about art and comics is that um, you can create a environment that's conducive to feelings of romance, um, life affirming, positive, hopeful things. And then people are free in some ways to interpret it how they want to. The problem Absolutely. is, right? If, you know, if I think, you I think a lot, go ahead. No, I, well, I don't mean to cut you off, but no, go, go, go. Know, I, well, I mean, I work with a lot of different people and all that. And something that I, I actually try to impress on them a little bit is, is that nobody's going to interpret what it is that you have in your head, just the way that you're seeing it at all. You know, the whole thing is, is to tell a story that, Hopefully, uh, a good number of people can kind of imprint themselves on, but they're all going to take away something different from it. Absolutely. Right. Well, I think, and that that's a good lead-in because if you take, if Campbell is the blueprint, if the monomyth and the journey are the blueprint, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, the shadow specifically, but I know you, in the yes. past uh, you mentioned pulps, and pulps, oh, yeah. if if pulps are anything, pulps are serialized myths. Now, modern myths, but they're serialized. And one of the great things about pulps is they are almost, um, in their structure, it's almost like folklore. It has a very quick paced, fast action, or a uh, quick face path, you know, fast paced story telling aspect to it. But at the same time, almost always the characters are initially are yeah. direct, direct archetypes from what Young kind of talks about. Sure. Do you, was it was it that aspect that you drew you to the pulps or was it something else? It was the fun. It was the fun, right? It was it was the uh, just the I, excitement, I mean, the the myth, the God, action. I was excitement and escapism. That's what it's right, about. Yeah, Damn it, all it, this. Why did you bring this up? I have to go out by the back fence. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be but, back in the barn here in just a moment, boys. All right, sounds Apologies. good. Apologies, I don't want to miss this, but I'll be right back. All right. But, you know, that's that's kind of the thing about it, too, isn't it? Is it's like um, if if you what's the best way I can put it? Um, the thing that got me was the ideas. When I saw Joseph Campbell and I watched him and I read his work and I looked at Jung and I read their work, it made me realize. And this is the same thing when I read about the Inklings, right? J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis and all those guys. It it made me realize how much I was longing for and missing conversations like this. Do you know what I mean? No, definitely. I mean, the, the, one of the great things about Comicsgate is, I mean, you can hop into a chat and you can have a discussion on Superman, or you can go right from that into another chat and you can enter this, or you can enter a discussion on Absolutely. the transition of Jim Starenko's career from when he went from comics to fantagraphics right. and movie. It's just, it's amazing the level of knowledge. <clears throat> and it is, it's like you're in a master's levels course at times with people with their encyclopedic knowledge and reference and stuff. Um, and I, I think that's amazing on comics gate. And I think that I can understand why that drew you here. I'm just kind of to kick back to the pulps though. What yeah, was, sure. is, is it the shadow specifically that you kind yes. of have pushed into this book as an influence or, or not really pushed, but influenced you in this book or is, is there another aspect? Cause I mean, there, there's a couple of things I see going on and I'm curious sure. if it's me projecting them onto the book or if you were intentionally trying to put them there. So, so yeah, I mean, I guess the best way I would put it is I think that we select the things that speak to us. And it's why I believe that the, the Joseph Campbell monomyth thing is when he's pointing out successful stories and stories that we have just, you know, glommed onto, it's because we as a civilization or we as a species are attracted to those. 
And when I saw the shadow, I remember when I saw different pulp characters, I saw the phantom, I saw all these different kinds of characters. Um, the phantom, there's this inherited thing. There's this, this family thing that's passed down, uh, which is great. And you've got this very heroic character, but I can't really relate to that. And with the shadow, the idea that this character had a darker past, that his ideas of justice, his ideas of, of morality uh, don't so much come from, they kind of come from a code, but they come from something that is a little bit more complicated, the way he debates his adversaries. And for me, it just, it, it just filled what, whatever that thing is, whether it's your spirit or whatever, you, you know, someone calls it your soul. It filled me up. It inspired me in terms of um, as a storyteller. And I thought, this is the kind of hero I can relate to. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this no, is the no, kind definitely. of person I, that makes sense to me. Because, no, and I mean, I want to, I want to talk on that topic for like two hours. Sure. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> well, we ain't but, going right. We'll, we'll be hopefully knock on wood. We'll have more time to right. talk. But the, you know? um, but no, I, I'm trying to keep this focused on just your influences, so I'm not going to sure, take it off track. But no, yeah. I, so I am curious because like I going through some of the art, and we'll go through the campaign here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But going through some of your art, I mean, you've got a couple of pages that are like, man, you could. If you change like one or two things, you could throw it on a Robert E. Howard, like Almerick pulp, yeah. and it would work. You could throw it on, oh, you know, an Edward Rice Burroughs Tarzan, and it would work. Like you're hitting all these great tones that are, it's it's the style and it's the cover that yeah. you, you'd you see from that time period. It's just, it's, and I'm not sure if it's the colors you use. I mean. Oh, it's what I steal from. Yeah, let's, let's get down to brass tacks. You're absolutely right. You know. So I liked I steal from Alphonse Mucha, Frank Frazetta, Arthur Conan Doyle, H.P. Lovecraft, and but you got uh, you Lewis. got it. There's there's some mooth in there too, though, man. Oh, well, you know what's so funny is I was the reason I started watercolor painting, and this will blow your mind, but or not won't blow blow your mind because we know this stuff is because I saw the book called uh, I saw Alex Ross's work when I was in college, and I looked at it, and that took three seconds. I went, I can't do this. This makes no sense to me. And then I saw John J. Muth stuff with the mystery play. Oh, and yeah. I saw how he was putting in those big values to direct the eye, and it made sense to me. It was very comic booky. So, yeah, Muth is, um, Muth is definitely somebody I saw, you know, who, who inspired me in terms of picking up watercolors. But there's Mobius in there. I mean, Mobius was the person who just blew my mind, you know. I mean, that stuff is, is crazy. But – um, I got Frazetta was the latest or the last big influence I've had on my work and it became pretty all consuming. So I saw, I really got Frazetta for the first time about five or six, oh God, might be even six or seven years ago. I'd had his work hanging about and then I saw his watercolors and some of his sketches and I went, this is, it's, how do I word it? You're right. Pulp to me is romance with balls. Yeah. <laughs> that <makes sense. laughs> and that's kind of that's what I needed. You know what I mean? I needed that testosterone fueled romanticism. And so, yeah, that that is that if there's the shadow to me, um, like if someone were to say to me visually where the shadow, you know, influences me, it's in the covers painted by and I can't believe I'm blanking on the guy's name. He's I have a whole like file of it here on my desktop, but he's one of the early pulp cover artists on the shadow. And I'm blanking for reasons I can't quite describe. But um, but it's, that's the kind of, uh, it's the, where is it here? It is, um, Rosen. Thank you, George Rosen. And the thing about that stuff is, is that it's the way that people who are, are kind of pseudo intellectually try to develop styles in this day and age is they try to make work that's incorrect on purpose so that it feels like it's got more character. And when you see George Rosen, his stuff is quirky and off because he is, throwing everything into it and he's on a deadline right and it gives it this reality it's not it's not cynical and it's not pretentious it's just um i've got to sell a pulp and this is going to be your cover and so when i'm sitting down to paint that's a huge part of it that that fuels me you know that 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 rawness like when campbell talks to you about mythology you feel like he's living it and when i talk to you in the comic book form anyway about nosfera i want you to feel like you're living it like you know, we're hanging out talking comics, you know, and, and right. we're talking heroes and all the stuff we love. Right. Yeah. No, when, like, 
when you talk, when you, when you kind of describe in that style and you're walking your way up to it and you're like, it's rushed and it's this, I, when, you, when you say that, like the first image that pops into my head is uh, Dan Green's into Shambhala, yep. which, which I, I mean, it's just got that fast paced pulps. I love that book. And um, yeah, I just, I, 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 it's, it's just, I can't tell you how great it is to see the style, that style just echoed so beautifully and it's, you're paying great homage to it and okay. it's, it's phenomenal to see. So, um, but yeah, it, I think, I guess going a little bit, if I can just touch on the pulps one more time though, kind of going Wait. back to that serialized aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you want to carry this forward as yeah, kind absolutely. of that serialized or, okay. So it is something that you you got something kind of planned out ahead of time. Absolutely. Like, so, so with this story and, and, you know, the story is, I know where the story starts and where the story stops. Um, and it's growing, you know, like there's going to be, cause I, you know, every time I need a couple more pages for a scene, you know, it's, it's going to get those pages. And, but the thing for me is, yeah, I definitely see something, you know, I see this going on. I've got tons and tons of ideas, but that ultimately has to do with the degree of support um, that the fans have for it. You know, the, the CG fans especially have for it, because if it's not something that people are reacting to them, you know, reacting to, then it's time for the next idea. Do you know what I mean? Like, yep. I'm not, I'm not going to captain a habit, you know, and you know, if, if, it's, <laughs> if it's not working for people and, and I think the idea is it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. And I want to make sure I'm, you know, selling people on the idea, but I also, um, I also want to make sure it's something that people react to because it's weird. Here's where I, I, I wouldn't say I've been analytical about, you know, it to any large degree, but I remember the thing, I really love comics gate. I've been around here since 2018, you know? Uh, so, you know, I, before, certainly before the launch of cyber frog and, and way back when, you know, I was there in the, the, the forums or sorry, in the chat. And, you know, I remember backing books and, you know, being like, this, this is amazing. This could be really, really cool. Yeah. When I thought about bringing my work into it, I was thinking to myself, what do I want? Not even what do I want to see? what would be cool to see in comics gate and what am I really passionate about? So comics gates always been a consideration. And I just felt that so many people were exploring, you know, these pulp ideas. And I thought, I think that this audience is, as you say, so sophisticated and intelligent and funny and, you know, like that God Cecil kills me guys. He's going to put me in a hospital <laughs> one of these days, man. And it's, it's one of those things to where that's what I love. You know, I love, you know, Carlin. I love Chappelle. I grew up on comedy, Richard Pryor. Like that's a part of myth to me. Like that's a part of storytelling to me. Some of the best storytellers, frankly, that yeah. I've, I've ever seen. And so when I sit down to do a book, I want this to be some like raw, like from, you know, it's, it's now it's 2021 pulp and it's our pulp and it's the birth of, or a part of the birth of what pulp means in a uh, liberated artistic movement like ours. And, and it's, I feel really, you know, honored to be contributing this and, and I wouldn't contribute just anything into this, you know, and, and that's why I think it was so important for me to have, you know, two books, you know, funded and fulfilled before I, I threw my hat in here because I know that's important to people. Like, am I going to see a product? Yeah. Well, you I know? think even, I think especially for artists, that's important because it gives yeah. you not only do I do I know as the consumer that you can produce and fulfill, but yeah. I also get a wider range of what your work looks like Yeah. other than just the eight preview pages or the six preview pages. Yeah. And that's definitely um, <clears throat> more of a selling point, at least to me, than um, just having six or seven preview pages, having going like, no, I, not only do I have this, I've got all these other pages of my work that you can get an idea of my style. Go, going back to something you said that this this is like pulp. I think um, if I could just I, I agree I'm gonna agree with you, but it's interesting um, when you have the you have the pulp explosion and then you have yeah. the explosion of radio. And what's one, one of the first things that's on radio are pulps. Pulp stories are then and yeah. then radio explodes. You go to television, pulp stories again are the first there. You go to comics, pulp stories again. You go to um, you know movies even pulp stories again and now here we are we're on the cutting edge of the technology and you know yeah. everybody everybody can hop on youtube and everybody can tell a story everybody sure. can self-publish their own comic book and what do you have those same themes of the pulps are coming back again i tell some of the kids i work with whatever that you know i mean 
you know, they're not going to watch a black and white movie. And I'm like, you, mm. <laughs> listen to Shadow. L- listen to fucking Radio Mystery Theater, for fuck's yeah. sakes. Figure out how to do a three-act play with nothing to work with, but just the actual dialogue and story. Right. And this yeah. is this is where Steve and I repeat the same thing we say on every yeah. other show that we're on, where, hey, if you're a struggling yeah. writer yeah. and you're Maybe having you're issues with dialogue, yeah. listen to old radio plays. It will yeah. help you write your dialogue. Well, one of the things I want to do and I've been working on is is um, doing radio stuff. So I want to actually do some radio stories with this character as a way. Yeah, of I like that. I like and, that. I'm in. Mean, well, because you guys have seen fantastic. my. Well, you guys have seen all the all the intros I've done and stuff for Ethan, right? So I'm always playing around with the technology, you know. And it's like, sure. um, you know, it's it's and I love doing stuff with audio and voices and redubbing things and and that's been kind of a fun part of the work I've gotten to do, but. I was, um, you know, I, you know, I saw this, this opportunity and everybody I meet always talks about doing radio shows and how to do it. And I know we all consume them. I, I fall asleep to radio shows. You know, like, that's just how it is. I love that stuff. Same and, here. Yep. and you can build like with just vi- like just grabbing different sound effects and things. You can sort of sculpt, you know, a space. Yeah, and, it. you know, it's like when I'm doing my, my painting and my drawing, I think that, what what Ethan's done really well in his way of, of doing things. And I think everybody's had a really, I mean, it's so cool to see what people are doing, but I thought to myself that if I'm building this world, what is this world really about? And it's that love of stories. And I thought, well, you know, Ethan's always saying, and, and a lot of people are saying, John talks about this as well. You know, let's, let's, you know, entertain people like it's radio. And the yeah. first thought I had, like <laughs> when I really started to think about was of course, like that's a really great way to get people into this world, you know, to get people into the pulpy aspect of it. So, yeah, I think a lot of us are going to be doing cool stuff. And then the other aspect of it is, is pulp by the Werner Herzog in my head, as we'll call him, is, <laughs> is the response of it is, you know, life is so horrible right now. The politics are messed up. Everybody, there's so much strife. There's so much trouble. It's all pointless. I had a hard life. Maybe I went through this when I was a kid. I hear that voice go, the pulp voice in Werner Herzog says, so, <laughs> so what? what? Right. Pick up a pencil, <laughs> so pick up what? a brush, and find well, I think that's, the things that you love, man. Make it happen. That's a, that's a great lead in here to go directly to <laughs> into your campaign because yeah. you're right. The, the world's, you step outside your door, gas prices are, it's, you know what it is? Yeah. It's the scene from network. You know, yep. only instead of getting up and open up your window and saying, I don't want to take it anymore. Well, it's not going to change anything because it didn't then. Yep. It's not going to change anything now. But what you can do is make sure your own house is in order. And once your bed's made and your room's picked up, sit down with a great book and escape for a little bit and remind yourself that there's something great that's out there, even if it's in your imagination. And one of those things that we have before us is Nosfero, the Crypt Walker. So you're, <clears throat> you've done two campaigns already that you fulfilled. You mentioned your art books. Yep. Um, so if we could just kind of go through here on some of your sure. art, this is your, your cover. Now you're, mm-hmm. I, I think you said you did hand draw your title. Yeah. So I'm going to show this to you. I, 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 you'll get a kick out of this. Um, for me to come up with a font, um, I have to do it. I had to paint it to understand it. So I did, mm. that's a, a digital, uh, recreation of it, but it is painted on the original. Oh, wow. So that's just hand lettering and gouache painted on you know, this story. And that's how I designed the type for the character. And then I went in and I, you know, recreated it in Illustrator, brought it into Photoshop. You know, there's, you know, the, the digital, I always tell, you would tell Your my production students, shops are pretty solid, dude. Speaking <laughs> yeah, from one that's... dude to another with some chops, <laughs> your production shops are pretty fucking solid. Oh, thanks brother. I'm the, I'm the cheapest guy I know <laughs> when it comes to hiring. You know well, yeah. I mean? I, I'll, I'll work for free, you know, and that's the great thing for me. And it's like, um, but I appreciate that. That that means a lot. I mean, it really does, Steve. I appreciate it. And and when I'm working, my my whole just make sure you're only working for free for yourself. That's exactly you right. That's right. You. I know. I do need to get after that, right? And yeah, I can't do all that other shit you do, but yeah. <laughs> say it. Let me say. You, you got some chops, brother. I, I, oh, yeah. thanks. I know I, my I way around the whole design program thing. And yeah, you're yeah. Anyway, we continue. It's, I don't mean to interrupt, know, but I just want well, to throw out some props. Well, I pre- hey, I appreciate it, and I'll tell you this about this book: is here's my 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 biggest promise I can make you. One, you're going to see cool creatures, you're going to see beautiful characters. You will not put this you will not put this book down 
and feel like it's just told you everything is a joke and a lie. I can guarantee you, you're going to have a fun time. It's going to be beautiful work, beautiful artwork, but it's also going to be, you know, I mean, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see what I mean. And some of these pages, I got to update that site. Some of these pages, you know, when I first launched it, you know, um, are, are, have evolved. But if you scroll down to, yeah, like right there, that one is pretty, well, let me see how much that one's changed. Not too much, but keep scrolling. I'll show you something real fun. I'll show you some fun stuff that, uh, See, it's got, I got to be careful on what pages I show, which is a problem. But, um, but yeah. spoilers, dude. Yeah, that's the spoilers. right. There's not too many spoilers, <laughs> but that page has undergone a fair amount of uh, of changes since then. Well, um, the one you were actually nope, you weren't showing that one. Let me grab the other one. I got guys. Seriously, I have <laughs> people are worried about like how's this book coming? See, there's a cyber frog trading card piece I can't show. There's too much stuff here I can't yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good uh, problem to have. <laughs> Don't show any a, mailing stuff. I know, seriously. <laughs> John, end up for in fuck's a ditch sakes. From, Don't know, show any mailing. I'll end up in a ditch in uh, Michigan somewhere. <laughs> you know? snap, I mean, dude. He'll yeah, snap. But when I'm doing stuff like, um, when I'm doing stuff like this, and oh, I'm painting wow. the staircases in and putting the characters together in this scene. When I'm doing yeah. work like, and I'm gonna put my thumb here so we don't get in trouble. When I'm doing a painting like this, <laughs> I don't think that helped, did it? Not really. No. no that's <laughs> that actually, actually completed the picture. Um, that's a fairly <laughs> prominent placement. I don't think I we know, can struck for this. Um, it it was gonna strike all this. Comics gets first three D scene. That's exactly right. So <laughs> this is the uh, this is the Frazetta. This is the adventure. This is the pulp. Oh, it's this beautiful. Is the, the gateway opening. And when you get to do things like with this page right here, I get to, I tipped the whole world to show you that up and down doesn't have a meaning. So here's the world that they're in. If I can make that come into frame, right? Right. Then, whoops, I had it upside down. So huh, there's my dyslexia. So there's the world that they're in right there as she's being sacrificed. And then that is what is that is what is waiting on the other side. And that's the scale from one panel to the next, even though it's like one continuous story. Right. No, I, let me world. let me tell you that that is the the individual pan the individual page that really jumped out on me on your campaign. <clears throat> and it's it, it's how you've constructed you've got the two tiers yeah, right with, with, sing, with single panels each but you've done this brilliant thing with this heavy white gutter and what and it's angled and the angle ever so slightly gives that the first tier this um, this sense of weight that's being either pushed up or held up by the lower panel it's and your art flows it's organic um it's it's just beautiful as far as uh like page construction. When I talk to anybody that hires me as an editor and I kind of mm -hmm. go through their, pa their sketches, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When I talk about, you know, give me something that's um, that jumps off the page at me and what you're doing in your construction or your composition. And this is like the textbook example for what ideally I look for. And it is, oh, it I is just that. exquisitely done. You have, that is, you, you, that, is, that is quite striking. Just so like this page right and, here, yeah. Man. This is what this to me, this kind of stuff, these these crazy panels that are going across. Talk about how you're doing this. All right. Now so if you just move if you just move it so um Phantasmos the dog is off, so it's just the castle and the graveyard scene, that's mm -hmm. that's uh that's a Robert E. Howard cover from nineteen. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well that and castle's it's amazing with the moon yeah. and the oh, moon the stones and the wolf. That's that's a Robert E. Howard cover. You could put Alric or Almerek or you know, Conan right up on top and it would work. <laughs> the, the teetering gravestones. Oh, it's I love that stuff. Oh, it's you guys, this is, this is such a, <laughs> such a pleasant experience. Um, I, want well, I didn't even I didn't know I would have seen no shit like that. Well, yeah, you Let know. me tell you, Sean, brother, I've been to four or five county fairs, you know, a rodeo, a hog <laughs> fucking, I've never even seen no shit like that. I'll tell you something, guys. It's, it's, I am so That's really great, man. Think about think about what we've created here though. Do you know like this is the stuff that I think when I see work by all of my other, you know, creators in CG though, right? Like I look at like, you know, Mary Boys. You know, I look at the stuff yeah, that cool um book. gosh, Narwhal stuff, you know, Perberg stuff. I look at Cyberpunk when I watch Ethan draw, I right? Yeah. 
Malin's, you know, godlike. Like I, I look at all of this stuff and I'm just like, this is, it feels like it's about this creative, you know, like all the books that I do. So we were talking about pulp. So the books I do, including this one, um, they're eight and a half by 11 glossy stock square bound books. And, they screen all and I want it to be, yeah, they screen pulp. It's like Neo pulp. And occasionally, you know, there's a page at the end. Whoops. Sorry. I didn't mean to. Show no, you. don't worry about um, it. Uh, <laughs> Coincidence. As my mother-in-law from Texas. And I know Steve's going to appreciate this. She, I said, what happened to the street sign in front of the house that you were bothered by? She goes, I, I hit it with my car accidentally on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite, but take a look at this piece right here too. This is, um, this is a fun pulpy piece I did called the the Mummy's Womb uh, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> I did with uh, uh, my take on Frankenstein and the Mummy. And then if you look at, uh, gosh, let's see here. Here's some more um, pages from the art book too. You can kind of see where some of my sensibilities were yeah. when I started thinking about what am I going to do, you know, with CG and and that stuff translates into, you know, uh, Frank and Kong, <laughs> you know, illustrations. Like it's about, you know, you know, that feeling guys, the same feeling that I think we all get when we see pulps. I don't, I don't, when I look at somebody else's artwork, I'm always just like, I love art so much guys. I love art and story so much. It is, it, it just fills up my soul. And when I hear people were shooting the bull with each other, talking about ideas, you know, when I was talking to Phil about pulps the other day, who's in the chat, what's up, Phil? Um, we were talking about you know, characters. Chat. What up, nephew? I'm not and it's like, yeah. right? And it's like, and I was, I did this sketch, um, this sketch that I was just doing between working on Nosfero whenever I need to try something out. This is an experiment on tone paper, and it's the um, the masquerade. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Nice. And I was playing around with it because it was the same thing. These I can show, but if you see the cyber frog kill the stream. Uh, I can't. I can't show that. Yet. Yeah, don't um, don't show anything Malin's from Malin for fuck's yeah, sake. Well, this one's already printed. Yeah, so this is from Malin's. Uh, oh, all right. Yeah, you get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like this is the stuff that, that I eye live is killer. For. And you know, isn't but and it's so fun, isn't it? I mean, the one I did I may have to sell this or auction this at some point because uh, yeah, I'm getting too much artwork piled up in here. Um, my speed sort of has gone. Dude, through you don't want to eat the streams. You're gonna like. You Make kill it, yeah. Bills off of that shit. Are you kidding but me? But this right is now? this is the uh, the one I did for Dan Frega, who's uh, yeah, a good dude, fantastic dude, and, it's uh, awesome. But we got guys. This is like we're we have the chance to make artwork with no limitations. This book is about this is everything that I love as a fan from CG, and it's with respect to the audience, which is to say that. Um, we love, we're fans of beautiful artwork. I don't want to send you know? all this off on another goddamn tangent that I will. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, dude, your artwork is amazing. But one of the things that really reaches out and strikes me, especially with some of those full 11 by 17s you were splashing around there, is, is oh. you know, your sense of spatial relations. You know, it's, it's, oh, like, it's looking like, it's a little Sternaco like. Where it's like oh, the wow, that's, overall. That's, yeah. that's, Shut your mouth, um, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's an amazing. So it now to talk about artists that we have, you know, that are giants. You know, it's like I, I can't even like the, these conversations that we have. Uh, my mentor, who to keep him out of any bullshit, I won't name, but uh, who's a pretty you know. Uh, a, let's put it mildly a very you know uh, successful brilliant man in comics art um told a story about how he was talking about storytelling because he's kind of seen as a, a kind of elder you know teacher so to speak in the field and he goes um and everybody was laughing as he was explaining things and then he couldn't figure out why they were all smiling ear to ear and he turned around and steranko was there <laughs> and then steranko goes i don't know if i agree with everything you said and they sat down and he said they had, he said it was one of the greatest moments of his life. They had like a two hour conversation. And by the end of it, they both were agreeing and acknowledging with each other's points. And he said, it was like having your mind blown. That's what I love about comics gate. That's what we do here. We have those know. conversations. We make that work. And when I look over at my shelf of comics gate books, it, it to me, it just feels like a wall of creativity and it feels so great to be a part of it and to be responsible for, 
not just buying these books. We're not buying books. We are and we aren't. We're backing artists and we are like patrons in the classical sense in the Western world, which is, of course, you know, as, as I've done for two campaigns, you're going to get your book. But I don't ever want to tell people that it's it's just that. You know, because it's the brushes, it's the paper. You know, when I buy a sheet of 300 pound cold press watercolor paper, uh, get new brushes with my points, that's really, if there's more to that than just buying the book, the time I dedicate to this book, those well, are the things not, that you guys are creating. It's beautiful. It's not just, I, I mean, don't, don't, by no means, don't, you can't stop there because the other yeah. thing, when, you, when you're supporting an artist in comics, when you're buying somebody's book, whether that's a, a writer, <clears throat> or an artist or a yes. combination thereof yeah. what the most important thing you're doing is you're 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 giving them your money your hard-earned money that's the only I mean, it's right. time right your money is your time so mm. you're exchanging a piece of time that you invested into them and there's no greater reward or honor than to receive somebody else's time and that is right and they are owed anybody who backs book include and i include myself in this back all the books i've backed I, what I love about CG is when I get those books, I can feel that they are returning that time. You know what I mean? Those yeah, hours right, in front but of that, the yeah. that also that ties into not just the time that you invested in the book or the time you invested in. It's all the time you spend streaming drawing. It's all the time you spend sure. doing this and exchanging ideas and talking and sharing your book with a different audience at this stream or another stream. All of that is tied into that. And so when somebody says like, well, it's, it's only 48 pages for 25 bucks. Like, no, it's so much more than that. That's just the you know, physical side of what you, you receive. Know you know what's so funny is if I were to count how many hours I've put into raising my kids, I don't know what that would top out as. <laughs> All right? I can tell you is I love it. I'm so grateful for that time. And I have a smile on my face when I think about it. And when I, I know for a fact, every time I've mailed one of these books, I always – it's always with a smile. I can't wait for people to get it. You know, when I, I'm packaging it, we're putting the tape. It's my wife and I, that's what it is. That's the business. Yeah. You know, it's, and I, we, we put these things into packages. We're like, did you get it? Oh, it got lost in the mail. Cause of COVID we'll send you another one. They're like, Oh, we got, I got the second one. Do I have to send that one back? We're like, are you crazy? You know, no, you're not right. sending it. like, this is a yeah. story from someone in Florida because this is like, I make this, I wouldn't be making this stuff if there wasn't, an audience of people who are this passionate. Like that's why I pour my soul into it. And I end the day exhausted with a smile, guys. I love it. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. So the book is Nosfero, the crypt Walker. It is available on Indiegogo in the description of this video. There is a link to it. Um, there's also a link to Sean's uh, YouTube channel. Make sure you run on over there after you back the book and give him a subscription. And I uh, just want to thank everybody for coming. And uh, I want to close out with one comment. And that's... If I could say one thing before you come. Absolutely. I have to do it. This is required by law. I want to say, guys, I appreciate you having me on so much. Thank you for having this time with me. It is wonderful. It's a pleasure to be on the show. <laughs> I want to say thank you to the chat. Thank you to Comicsgate. Guys, I appreciate your time and your money. And especially to my two hosts here. Thank you. I appreciate your time and your energy you put into this, guys. Truly. All right. Well, thank, thank you very much. And yeah. on that oh, note, yeah. <clears throat> Campbell said, it has always been the prime function of mythology and right to supply the symbols that carry the human spirit forward. And up to, man, the last few years, I've seen a lot of great books, but I have not seen art that moved me quite the way that this book did. So I just, I strongly recommend, please, guys, go check this out if you're so inclined. Back it. From all of us here on the barn at the farm, have a great night. Thank you.